okay, I just had to do a video on this thing of Jonah, quote-unquote Jonah, as evidence that salvation is by faith in the Old Testament. You're just going to see the mental gymnastics these non-dispensationalists non -dispensationalists like Stephen Anderson have to do to say that salvation is by faith alone in the Old Testament. And you're going to see he actually adds to Scripture to say that, see, salvation was by faith in the Old Testament. And he's crossing dispensational lines, taking Pauline epistle stuff and applying it to the Old Testament. And it's just crazy. Let's, let's watch this. I just, I just had to do a video on this when I saw it. But he says, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. Now, he didn't literally do that, but this is prophetic of Jesus Christ. The earth with her bars about, was about me forever. Again, that's Christ in the heart of the earth being foreshadowed. He's in the heart of the earth because he's going to Abraham's bosom and collecting up the Old Testament saints and taking them to heaven. He's not burning in hell for three days and three nights like uh, Anderson teaches. He thinks that when it says Jesus was in the heart of the earth, he was done hell burning. No, he, there's, see, one, and this is something Anderson rejects. There are two compartments in that chamber in the heart of the earth. There's hell and then there's Abraham's bosom. Abraham's bosom because back in the Old Testament they could not go to heaven. The animal sacrifice would atone for their sins, but it would not it would not give them access to heaven. They, they would go to Abraham's bosom and rest there. Then when Jesus died on the cross, he was that perfect sacrifice. He went down to the heart of the earth, gathered up the Old Testament saints in Abraham's bosom, then took him up to heaven. He was not in hell burning for three days and three nights like this non dispensational heretic believes. I mean, it's crazy, but let's continue. Out here. He's prophesying of Jesus. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. Again, prophesying of Christ. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. What a profound statement. Salvation is of the Lord. What does that mean, salvation is of the Lord? This is the source. The word of there is referring to the source. Where does salvation come from, right? Salvation is of the Lord. Okay, he is... Now, Anderson's right in the sense that salvation is of God, meaning he, like, he grants you grace. You see, salvation is by grace. Grace has always been there. God grants you his grace to allow you to gain access to heaven. However, it was always by faith alone. And you're going to see what he does. What he's doing right here is he's saying that it says salvation is of the Lord. That means it was by faith, not by works. Uh, where does it say that anywhere in the text? It just says if salvation is of the Lord, meaning that God's grace was there. You see, in the Old Testament, God's grace was there. He had grace for people. You know, when Adam and Eve sinned, he gave them, he had grace for them, meaning he would still give them access to heaven. But it was not by faith alone. And I'm going to show you some scripture debunking this, but you're just going to see, create. I mean, crossing this, again, taking Paul and epistle stuff, he's going, to, he's going to take Ephesians 2, 8, 9, apply it to the Old Testament. And then he's going to say that they're saved by the death, bear, death, burial, and resurrection in the Old Testament. I mean, it's crazy. Is the source of, salvation is not of works. Because right. think about that of, salvation's by faith, but then it says it's not of works, lest any man should boast. Isn't that the same wording as salvation is of the Lord? It's not of works. It's of uh, no, I mean, what? So hang on a sec. Salvation is not of works, meaning it's of the Lord. What? I mean, where does it say that anywhere in the text? You see, he's adding to scripture. Salvation is not of works in the Pauline epistles, but salvation is of the Lord, meaning he gives you grace. Crazy. I mean, weird it's of the lord right. it's christ's death burial and resurrection that saves us Amen. not by works of righteousness so basically he's saying that jonah so i have a question are you saying that jonah was trusting in christ's death bear death burial, and resurrection on the cross to be saved even though it hadn't happened yet kind of weird i mean i've seen anderson's basically they say that you know and again i've shown in other videos they literally say that people in the old testament basically trusting and for basically believing in jesus christ to be saved so basically you're believing in jesus christ trusting his death burial and resurrection even though it hasn't happened yet wow i mean this is just crazy so trusting is something that hasn't even happened yet and didn't even, i mean there i mean there are some prophecies here and there in the book of isaiah but to say that jonah was trusting in christ's death burial and resurrection huh hadn't even happened yet oh let's continue this was we've done 
but according to his mercy, he saved us. Amen. Salvation is of the Lord. So again, every book in the Old Testament is pointing us to Jesus, and it's pointing us to salvation. Uh, pointing us to Jesus. Uh, where is Jesus in the Old Testament? Let me show you something. He says, it's pointing you to Jesus. Uh, okay. Let's go to Bible app. Let's search up. Search up. Uh, search for exact phrase. Old Testament. I'm going to search. Jesus. Let's see what comes up. Look at that. Zero verses found. Jesus was not preached in the Old Testament. There is no mention of the name Jesus in the Old Testament. So to say that people in the Old Testament trusted in Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection on the cross to be saved is ridiculous. It's crazy. I mean, I've never heard of this. I mean, I can I've never heard of this weird thing. I mean, weird. I mean, I've never. I can't think of any Bible teachers that ever said this. I mean. I mean, even non-dispensational people have never even heard say that people in the Old Testament believe in Jesus to be saved. Uh, Jesus was not bodily manifested until the book of Matthew. It's crazy. But if you want some proof that salvation is by works in the Old Testament, and there's places all over the Old Testament, but a really strong one is in, uh, I've, I've gone over this one before, Ezekiel 3, verse 18 and 20. Here's a good one. I'd like to see uh, these uh, new IFB goons look at. Ezekiel 3, uh, 3, verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou uh, givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Verse 19. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Wait a second, you have to turn from your wicked way, or you'll die in your iniquity, and go to hell? Uh, where is faith alone? Clearly saying, you have to turn from wickedness or you would die in your iniquity. But look at this, verse 20. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, I lay, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not or thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Wait a second. His righteousness, which he hath done, uh, that's works. Here's another good one. Ezekiel... 33, and, and there's verses all over the Old Testament that prove it's by works, but it, here's just some really strong ones I want to show you. Uh, where is it? Ezekiel 33, verse 8. Uh, when I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Verse 9, nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked, uh, of his way to turn from it, and he do, and he do not turn from his wicked, or uh, right from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, you have to turn from your wicked way, or you will die in your iniquity and go to hell. Where is faith alone in all this? So again, here's just some weak, like hardcore proof that salvation is by works in the old, is by faith. You have that faith, but you have to turn from your wicked way, or you'll die in your iniquity. And it also knows how it says, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So wait a second, your soul is delivered because you're warning the wicked. And also Anderson will say there's eternal security in the Old Testament. Um, no, not, not really. No, there was no eternal security in the Old Testament. Let me just try to find that verse. I didn't have this written. I did not have this verse written down. Actually, one sec. Here's one that proves that there was no eternal security in the Old Testament. Or is it Psalms? Here it is, Psalms chapter 51, verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Uh, David is saying to God, don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Uh, how does that line up with Ephesians 1, 13, which says you are sealed with the Holy Spirit? See, because this is a different dispensation. In the Old Testament, you could lose your salvation. God can take the Holy Spirit from you. Ephesians 1, 13 because Psalm 51.11 says, Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Well, how does that line up with Ephesians 1.13? Where it says, In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also that after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, wait a second, there's a contradiction there. David is saying, Don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Paul is saying, You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you have a contradiction. No, it's different dispensations. Isaiah is to Jews under the law. Ephesians 1.13 is to Christians, to the Gentiles. The Apollon epistles are to the Gentiles. So, anyway, just don't be deceived by these non-dispensational heretics. I mean, you have to do these mental gymnastics to say that, oh, they're saved by faith in the Old Testament. They're saved by Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection in the Old Testament, even though it hadn't happened yet. Right. Don't be deceived by this. God bless you. Goodbye.